Hello! So today I'm going to be talking about Best Served Cold by Joe Abercrombie, the first standalone book in the First Law series. I started reading this book before the Book Along List was announced, but because every year I like to read the entirety of the Book Along List, uh, or I try to read the entirety of the Book Along List, uh, that sort of took over and I put this book on hold. However, I have just read headshots from the Book Along List, which I thought was absolute garbage. I hated it. And before that, I had read Orbital, which I absolutely despised as well. They're two books that I, they're like 0.5 books. I just could not stand them. I had to go to myself, I need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> this long list because it's getting me down uh the the whole list so far has been pretty mid except for a two um out of like eight or nine that i've read <laughs> which is not a good hit rate um so i decided to pick this book back up because i didn't have much left to go and finish it off the novel is set in Styria, a kind of war tour land that is reminiscent of kind of Renaissance Italy. Within Styria, we have a lot of mercenary companies and politicians who are all battling for power and influence. Our protagonist in this novel is Monza, a renowned mercenary. She is smart, cunning, and she is very, very violent, but she is portrayed by her employer, Duke Orso. Orso orders the death of her and her brother in a very brutal way, but she survives. She survives, but she is very, very, very badly injured. And after barely surviving this assassination attempt, Monza and then the plot of this book becomes a single-minded quest for revenge. A quest for revenge against the seven men who participated in her betrayal and the death of her brother. With elements of Ocean's Eleven, Monza needs to put together a crew. And it's a crew of very morally ambiguous characters. The novel is a sequence of brutal but calculated assassination attempts on each of the people who betrayed her. Each murder escalates in complexity as the novel builds, but then so do the consequences. I would say the main themes of this novel are power, corruption, and revenge, and the cost of revenge. I will not be the first person to say this, but this novel is a combination of two films, Ocean's Eleven and Kill Bill. If you enjoy either of those films, you are going to enjoy this book. As mentioned at the start, this is a standalone novel, and you can read this without having read anything else within the first law series. However, I do think your enjoyment, especially as a couple of characters that were in the first three novels appear in this novel, I do think your enjoyment is greatly, greatly increased having read the first three. So I would always suggest you read the first three books first. However, if you're a bit like, I don't want to commit to something like that. Also, I think so far out of all the books I've read, the first book, uh, The Blade itself, for me, is still the weakest book. If you wanted to like give something a go or an entry point, this isn't a bad one out of everything I've read. I would say, yeah, you could give this a go and be like, okay, this is the style of writing. This is the style of Joe Abercrombie and then go back to the blade itself. That might be a good way to do it. But either way, I would say my enjoyment was greatly increased because I'd read all the others. So what did I like and what didn't I like? What I liked. Well, of course, the thing I have to start with, the thing that I absolutely love about Joe Abercrombie's writing is his characters. They just grow, evolve in such complex and brilliant ways. Now, I would say the character development in this isn't as good as some of the other books in the First Law series that I've read so far, but it is still really, really strong. His characters just feel so unique. They are written so beautifully and so much care and time is spent on their voice, where they come from, the imp oh, just, yeah, his characters are top notch. The world building is of course absolutely excellent. Joe Abercrombie is just so good at allowing the main plot thread and the characters to just drive through the novel whilst building the world around us. Like Styria, the sort of dark atmosphere of it, the way it's built, the way it is quite different from what we have in the first three novels. Uh, it has its own sort of set of rules, but also, the sort of grimness of it and the darkness of it really matches this world <laughs> and the tone of everything that's come before it. There's sort of like, yeah, the political intrigue, the backstabbing is still there, but it sort of shifts and operates in a little bit of a different way from the first three books. And I think that might get overlooked a little bit. I think it's done. Yeah, the world building, so good. Next up is, of course, Joe Abercrombie's writing style. I feel like when I do these reviews of his books, it's going to be the same three things I'm mentioning first all the time. But his writing style, it's so sharp. It's so funny. It's so full of wit. It is able to kind of be really, really dark. And then he sort of constantly undercuts everything sometimes with a joke. Now, to some people, that's not going to be to their liking. But for me, I kind of, once I got used to it, and I knew that's the kind of world we're in, you really grow to absolutely love it. And yeah, there's a darkness there, but it never, it can always get undercut with humour. And the dialogue, oh, the dialogue is just so, so good. 
Next thing I absolutely loved is the action scenes. Of course, it's another trademark of Joe Abercrombie. This is why he is so incredible as a writer, that all of his trademarks are basically all the things that you want to be good in a novel. Uh, but the action sequences are written really, really well, especially some of the more subtle ones where the characters need to be a little bit more quiet in their assassination attempt. You know, there's like poisonings and, and a lot of manoeuvring that needs to happen with different sort of characters in different places. And yet the tension, the way those scenes build is just done really well. What I also really liked about this novel is it kind of resists simple resolutions or kind of moral clarity, which ultimately makes the book a lot more thought provoking than your typical revenge story. Now what I'm about to mention could to some go in the dislike category, but I actually quite liked it, but it does kind of shift the novel's intent, because for me, I enjoyed Shiver's arc and the whole novel and story for me became more about Shiver's than it did Monza. Apologies, but whilst editing, I decided to get rid of a section in which I break down and tell you about all of Monza's crew. It was just making the video way too long and I didn't think it added too much of value. But I do realise now that you have no idea who Shivers is. So me mentioning Shivers as being one of my favourite parts of the novel means nothing to you. So basically, Shivers is a Northman. He travels to Styria. He arrives right at the start and we sort of get his eyes of sort of like taking in the world. Shivers is also a character uh, from the previous three novels. He appears in the second two novels of the first trilogy. Uh, he is one of Logan Ninefinger's gang. And yeah, he's basically there to try and get a better life, to try and escape the violence and all the, the battles of the world he's just been a part of. But of course, uh, violence and war seems to follow him around. But what Shivers goes through in this novel, it is dark. It is disturbing, both physically to him, but also mentally to him. He goes through a massive change and he is really what we see as one of the major costs of a revenge sort of story. His, he's just like her, Monza's not right hand man, but he's in her gang and they are close. And yet I just thought like we are seeing this world because he's an outsider. We're seeing this world through his eyes and a lot of things are enabling or being explained to us through his exploration of what's going on, which is done incredibly well. So throughout it, even though I was going, it's really good that Joe Abercrombie has put a, a female character in the centre in centre stage, you know, in that sort of central protagonist slot, I still think he's failed. <laughs> like my one-ish, it was only small complaint about the first three novels is that female characters, the ones he had in there were great, uh, but we just needed maybe a few more thrown in there or for me personally, or they just needed a little bit more time at times. I was never like, oh, he's terrible at female characters ever, uh, but they could have just always been better. They could have just been a bit more. So I feel like this might have been his response to that by going, I'm gonna put a female character as the lead protagonist, but I feel like he's failed because I feel like the novel, because of the way Monza is and the way that she keeps people distant, we're never able to really emotionally connect to her in the same way that we were to Shivers. And all of a sudden I found myself being like, I feel like this is Shivers story. <laughs> I could be totally wrong and you can come at me in the comments if you want but let me know if you felt the same way but I definitely felt like this was Shiva's story but I'm still putting it as a like because I loved his arc I absolutely loved where he started and where he ended up the journey we go on with him is absolutely excellent and my final like and I'm gonna have to be a bit careful for spoilers but I really like the conclusion of this one I think what was won was also equal in what was lost is what I'm gonna kind of say for everybody, for absolutely, and there are so many characters in this novel, but if you look at each of them and where they ended up, I do feel like there's a real balance between what was gained and what was lost. And that is really interesting because you get to that end point and you go, oh, this is the cost of what she has set out to do. And it is far reaching and far greater than we could have ever possibly imagined at the start of this novel. And that is why the novel, yeah, it's just, really good in that aspect and I just love that we we end in an area going yeah this is neither good or bad we've just this is where we've ended up and I thought that was great what didn't I like for me there are some pacing issues in this novel the middle section feels incredibly repetitive in kind of what we're going through like on to the next person do a little kind of planning on to the next person do a little planning it just felt even though each kind of murder, each assassination attempt does shift in sort of location and approach, it did feel a little bit repetitive, especially in the middle section. This novel is over 600 pages long, and I'm just gonna say it, but I know it's a really lazy criticism, but it just could have been shorter. It, nothing would have been lost in my eyes if she was hunting down 
five people to kill instead of seven. Do you know what I mean? Like there was just, it didn't need to be as many people that she was on the hunt for. Uh, that middle section dragged and it just could have been a much shorter. I honestly, I really felt it in this one. I felt the drag in the middle and yeah, it just needed to be cut down for me. Another dislike, and I've already sort of mentioned it, but I didn't really emotionally connect to Monza as much as I wanted to. I thought I was going to, but she has this kind of her guard up because of the mission that she's on. And But even in moments where I feel like we're trying to be given a glimpse into a different side of her or emotionally connect to her, I, I didn't. Now that could just be totally on me and you could maybe comment below and say I really, really connected on an emotional level to her, but I didn't at all. Uh, and she's a protagonist and I wanted a different side of her or at least that different side that we get a glimpse of to be much more explored. I would have rather we had had more time on that than some of the murder attempts that were in there. So yeah, that's another thing I wasn't like, I, I just could have been better for me. Despite a few twists that do take place throughout the story of this novel, overall, it's quite predictable. You can you can sort of predict where it's going. There are shifts and things that happen that I honestly, I totally couldn't predict. I'm not saying I'm like, I knew everything that was gonna happen, but overall, it's a revenge story and you can kind of guess and, and where the major beats lead, it's all a little bit predictable. Here's the thing, now I'm becoming very, very familiar with Joe Abercrombie's work and his style. His sort of subversion of fantasy tropes that I absolutely love, uh, the sort of darkness of it, undercutting it with humour, with great dialogue. It, I'm starting to sort of get so familiar with it that it's no longer wowing me. I'm still so utterly impressed by it. But when it takes place in a novel that's just quite simple like this one with a very simple story structure, it's not as... Uh, complex plot wise as the other three novels with all the different characters and where it goes and where it builds and how it layers because it's a lot more simple um, it doesn't have the impact that it does within much more narratively complex sort of stories being told so I did find myself going uh, I'm loving so much about this but there's something within that subversion of what he does that doesn't quite work as well on something that isn't as narratively complex Overall, Best Served Cold is a dark, brutal, thrilling story of revenge that is showcasing Joe Abercrombie's absolute best talents, his five star talents, which is his characters, his world building and his dialogue. However, its plot just didn't justify its length for me and I wanted our lead protagonist to have just a little bit more nuance. But oh boy, this novel is very, very, very entertaining and I had an absolute blast reading it. So I'm landing on four stars out of five. Have you read this novel? And if so, what did you think about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Please let me know in the comments below. And as always, I hope you're well. I hope you're enjoying whatever you might be reading and I'll see you all on the next one.